If you play video games, you probably know how important your controller is. A bad controller can leave you frustrated, and the wrong kind of controller can make a game unplayable. Often we make do with what we have, and if they made StarCraft work with the N64 controller, I guess anything is possible. But then you have competitive gaming with tons of money on the line, and suddenly using an analog stick to move your cursor doesn't seem like a great idea. You need to carefully consider your controller, not unlike a baseball player choosing a bat. But even if you're not a pro gamer, you want a controller you're comfortable with, especially if you're going to be spending hundreds of hours playing on it. When it comes to fighting games, you're faced with the age-old question of using either an arcade stick or a pad. And then there are a bunch of different brands. I'm going to be cliche and say the best controller is the one that you're most comfortable with. But believe it or not, it's not as simple as it sounds. This must be so hard for you. My condolences. I want to start with arcade sticks, the more expensive of the two, and the one that doesn't come with consoles. The arcade is where fighting games blew up, and it was during a time when the mainstream console gaming experience couldn't match the graphics, sound, and control layout of an arcade cabinet. Some home ports like Street Fighter 2 actually did a good job of simulating the arcade version, but at the time, no game was what's known as arcade perfect. Arcade perfect fighting games were so coveted that people were buying actual arcade cabinets to get the full gaming experience. Oh, so then I got to buy anything I wanted and I got myself uh, a Street Fighter 2, like an arcade game. This was obviously not very practical, so the next best thing was to get a controller that resembled what you'd find in an arcade. But which arcade are we talking about? The US and Japan use completely different arcade parts, and it makes you wonder how it came to be like this. What happened? <laughs> it's important to know that joysticks weren't always so advanced. If we go back to the late 70s, there was a popular arcade game called Galaxian that used a two-way joystick, left and right. It was a simpler time where the concept of a quarter circle was pure science fiction. But then a game called Pac-Man came along which used a four-way joystick. Because the inputs were up, down, left, and right, a gate with four corners was ideal, and amazingly enough, there was a perfect shape for that, a diamond. By the time eight-way joysticks were introduced, the US, Europe, and Korea each made their own version of a circular gate, but Japan did not. They just did this. I don't know why, but I imagine it was a way to be efficient and save on cost by not having to make new molds and parts. After all, Japan did come up with just-in-time manufacturing for cars, which was centered around the idea of avoiding waste. One thing I do know is the decision to maintain a square gate wasn't because they thought it would be the best stick to use in competitive Street Fighter 2 a decade later. Actually, none of these standardized arcade sticks were specialized for competitive fighting games, or any single genre for that matter. In the US, a company called Hap Controls manufactured the parts in the American arcades. These sticks and buttons were what Justin Wong used to learn Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and what John Choi used to win two championship titles at a single EVO. You can even see Mr. Street Fighter himself using a hap stick on his first encounter with Daigo, who was using a Japanese Sanwa stick. Basically, the stick used in your region was the stick you grew up with because you didn't have any other choice at the time. But around the turn of the millennium, arcades in the States and Europe were starting to suffer, and console games finally caught up to arcade-level graphics. This of course affected American arcade part manufacturers, and in 2005, Hap merged with Suzo, a Dutch company that also made arcade controls. But by 2008, when Street Fighter 4 came out, Mad Cats and Hori sticks using Japanese parts were everywhere in the US and adopted by many American players, myself included. American Moss sticks using hat parts were hard to find, and people like John Choi who were still using them found it harder and harder to get replacements. On top of this, EVO 2009 would feature a marquee grand final with Japan's Daigo Umahara and America's Justin Wong both using Mad Cats controllers with Japanese parts. This pretty much sealed the deal in the eyes of many spectators who were mulling over what kind of stick they should get, and for good reason. Nearly everyone winning was using them, and they were readily available. But then came EVO 2012. This was the year that Korea pulled a hat trick and won three championship titles. All hail the Korean overlords and infiltration uh, getting a little emotional. The thing to note is that two of the three titles were won using Korean sticks and buttons in non-Tekken games. And no, Street Fighter Cross Tekken doesn't count as a Tekken game. The controller that was used to win two of the titles was designed by Korean player Ryan Ahn, also known as La, the very player who won Street Fighter Cross Tekken with Infiltration that year. His story kind of parallels a movie called The Natural where Robert Redford carves his own bat out of wood struck by lightning in his backyard and starts hitting home runs with it. If this reference is too old for you, here's The Simpsons version. 
home runs you're gonna hit with that. Let's see, we play 30 games, 10 at bats a game, 3,000. But it gets crazier. Two years later, a French player called Luffy won Street Fighter IV using a PlayStation 1 gamepad. This impressed so many people, it even ended up on Kotaku, the Gawker-owned gaming blog that admits to not really understanding the FGC. Aside from the fact that Luffy was able to find a lag-free PS1 to Xbox 360 converter, this didn't surprise me too much. Why? Well, because I've watched him play before, and because the PS1 pad has been out since 1995 in Europe. This means that Luffy was using a pad that had been out for 19 years, which is a long time to get used to a controller. Eight-way D-pads have been widely used in the States since the 80s, and nearly every console since has had a D-pad come with it. With this in mind, it makes sense that two Americans who performed the best at Capcom Cup 2015 were Snake Eyes and Knuckle Dew, both exclusive pad players. This means that while many top Street Fighter players in the West are using pads, almost zero players are using them competitively in Asia. The closest I've seen is Japanese player Santaro Man making fun of Luffy for using a PS1 pad. Luffy. Aside from being a funny little trash talk video for a grudge match, the implication was deeper. The message is, use a real controller, son. You know, like the one I grew up with using since my childhood in Japan, and the one you were never introduced to until way later. But many props to Luffy for having a strong mental game and sticking to his guns. It's easy to question yourself when you're doing something that's never been done before, but having the confidence to not let that break you is what I think defines a champion. But all that said, there are actually lots of other reasons to switch to a stick or a pad. There are definitely real advantages and disadvantages to each controller setup, and I'm sure there's room for an endless debate on this topic. As long as you can get comfortable with what you're using, and you're not using one of these, you can spend more mental energy fighting your opponent and less on fighting your controller. Let me know in the comments what controller setup you like for fighters. Many thanks to Laugh for helping me out with this video, and make sure to check out his arcade sticks at etoki.com. Be on the lookout for the PS4 Omni Stick. This was Gerald Akore Gaming. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.